I am not a size queen. I love all dicks, all shapes and sizes, girths, lengths. Is it hot in here? <laughs> when I met my husband, I started taking the biggest dick on the regular. And this isn't like bragging or anything. This is for educational purposes to give you all the tips that I have been using for eight years now to continue to handle large equipment. So here are four tips that I live by religiously for taking extra large packages that I know will help you too, slut. Tip number one is to breathe, bitch. So many people are not doing this on the regular. Stressful jobs, shitty boyfriends, family stuff, and everything in between has got you clenching. Your shoulders and your cheeks. All kinds of breathing exercises you can do. Box breathing is my preferred, and if you do it enough, you can actually feel your muscles letting go and eventually, if you're sitting on the floor, you can feel your whole relaxing. It feels like your butt is melting into the ground. That's how deep you need to be breathing. So before you even start douching, prepping, playing with toys, any of that, take some deep breaths and make sure that you are not clenching before you do anything else. Tip number two are toys. God, I spit everywhere. Toys are going to be vital in prepping for big dick especially if they've got girth. I would argue that it's actually easier to take a thinner long penis than a girthy long one because you need to let your sphincter stretch out and relax a lot more before you're taking girthy packages. Prostate simulators and butt plugs are going to be your hole's bestie when it comes to prepping for the pull. And you need to start thinking of this stuff more like ass training. You don't necessarily need to be getting railed today to do this training. Olympians still train even when when they're not doing the sport. So start thinking about getting the same way. I don't even know if I made that sport analogy correctly. Now back to prostate simulators and butt plugs. There are a couple ways you can use these strategically that work wonders. All right, let me just get my bin of sex toys. Jesus, this is so messy. I love prostate stimulators, and if there was anything you had in your bottoming toolkit, this is the one. A lot of people that bottom talk about that sensation to have to pee during or even after sex. That's because you need to build up a little bit of tolerance on your prostate, but we'll talk about that in a different video. Aww. The thing that I love about prostate stimulators for dealing with bigger packages is if you have a partner like I do and you know the curve of their penis, you can play with the toy mimicking that curve. If you're hooking up with someone and they sent you a dick pic, look at the curve in the photos and start to play with the toy in that same curve. During doggy, if their penis is curved up, it's going to hit you like this. My partner's penis is curved like this, so anytime that I play with this toy, whether I'm doing reverse cowgirl on a pillow, laying on my back doing missionary, or on all fours, I try to play with this toy as much as possible like this because his ding dong is going to be hitting deeper than this in the same curve. I can't believe I just said ding dong. D or penis. Don't say ding dong. I'm just word vomiting. So try to mimic those poses and those positions of the toy so that when you're dealing with the real deal, your body is super comfortable with that feeling. What else we got in here? Where are my butt plugs? Butt plugs. Butt plugs are amazing because you can work your way up. And this goes back to that training tip that I mentioned where you don't really have to even be getting railed today to start training your hole. Now I tell everyone to start with the smallest one and that is again from experience. I have been bottoming for the biggest I've ever taken in my life for eight straight years now. And when I use a butt plug, I still start with the smallest because you could be dealing with a lot of stress right now in your life and you could be clenching in places you weren't even really realizing. So so it's good to start small and it, you know, it might slip right in. You're like, okay, great, I get to go up. But there are days where I surprise myself and that even the smallest one is still a little hard to take because I'm just dealing with a lot. Once you finally work your way up to the biggest one, I love to just do deep breathing exercises on this toy. And on my inhales, I'll relax everything as much as possible. And on the exhales, I'll clench around the toy. I have quite literally gotten off just doing that exercise alone because it feels so good it really helps your sphincter relax way way better for girthier oh, Alex I've got all that I'm good on that well what about this bitch <laughs> This is an anal wand. They're grooved again for your sphincter to start chilling out around it. So you can insert in, breathe through that, do that inhale, release, exhale, clench, inhale, release, exhale, clench. And then when you feel that loosening up, go down, go down. And once you're all good with those, 
dildos. Now you can suction cup it onto the wall and f yourself to high heaven and back with it. What I like to do with it though, is I insert it all the way in and just breathe and clench around it. I like this because it gets me ready for the real deal and I don't have to do all that inserting all that because it's not about that. It's about relaxing and getting the muscles as deep inside of me, especially that sphincter, which isn't deep at all, to chill the f out so that I can get when I was making this video, I forgot to mention this really amazing toy called an O-Nut. If your partner has a really big package and sex can be really painful for you sometimes, this is for you. An O-Nut acts as a barrier. This is especially useful if your partner kind of forces things in sometimes and you need to go a lot slower. Basically, your partner just starts with as many rings as possible and works their way down to maybe zero rings, maybe one ring, maybe you permanently keep those rings on if it's more comfortable for you in general. I'll link these below because they're gonna up your sex game in a pain-free way. All right, that's enough with toys. Tip number three, Dr. Carlton's butt clock technique. Life-changing stuff. I love this technique and I still use it to this very day. This tip is especially important for you if you are someone that feels like you never loosen up. If you're one of those people, you want to do this tip before you start putting in any toys. So I'm going to use this toy just to show you all how Dr. Carlton's butt clock technique works. So this is your hole, also known as where you take it. And you're going to lube up your finger, either yourself or a partner. I prefer doing it myself to start with because I want to make sure I'm relaxed and good to go. Now you only need to go as far as it's going. Maybe you don't get in your whole finger. Maybe it's half your finger. That's good to know. And immediately start pressing in to the wall of your rectum and sphincter at three o'clock. Breathe deeply and hold that for 30 seconds. Go down to six o'clock, pressing down. You're pressing the wall of your finger into the wall of your rectum. You're not poking, you're pressing down. 30 seconds, making eye contact. 12 o'clock, going all the way around, you will feel your sphincter release. Uh. That's when you can go in a little further. Every time you're going further, you're repeating around the clock before you're pushing in anymore. Once you are knuckle deep in that mother you're going to pull out, give yourself a breather, and see how easily that finger goes in before doing anything else. If it slides right on in, you're ready for the next thing, whether it's a toy, whether you want your partner to start doing it to you before they start fucking you. I personally think fingering can be kind of lame, so this is a really great way to spice things up and have your partner help you with it. And it's also utilitarian because it's helping you prepare for the real deal. This is also really important to know because you'll be more in tune with when you're having a hard time letting go. Maybe today is not good for bottoming, so you can prevent injury and pivot to blow jobs, hand jobs, whatever else will help you get off without hurting yourself. And tip number four is lube. And before you say bitch, duh, I know you're not using enough. Some of y'all are also out there using spit and that is definitely not cutting it. When you're getting a hit from the back, baby, you've got to be using silicone lube and plenty of it. It cracks me up when my husband puts lube on his penis versus me putting lube on his penis because it really gives that top bottom energy. He'll put like a couple squirts, put it on and I'll immediately be like, no, we need more. When I start on top though, and I go to put lube on him, Eight pumps, eight pumps, 10 pumps. It's dripping. You want a lot. Your anus does not get wet like a vagina does. And you're probably gonna need more lube in a couple minutes anyways, because if you're big penises, you're gonna need more lube down the tunnel. Wow, newsflash, all the lube on your butthole wasn't making it eight inches into you. And here's a bonus tip, just because I'm so passionate about how to take big comfortably. Start in a position that you know works for your body. For me, cowgirl position is one that my body loves and craves. I also get to control the speed and depth at which the penis is going inside of me, and that's really important sometimes just to loosen up and relax. Don't get me wrong, I am not some kind of nun. I love getting railed, but I don't want an anal fissure either. One of my favorite tricks, and I seriously have been doing this since I was like 20 years old, I will start in cowgirl position, put lube on my 
partner's penis and I will ease into it starting with the head, slowly riding just the head. And when I feel myself relaxing even more, I'll go down and ride a little more. When I finally make it all the way to the bottom of the shaft, I will pull all the way off, take a couple breaths, put some more lube on and go back down on that boy. Assuming everything feels good and there is zero pain, in fact, it feels incredible, that's when I know that I am good to go. If I feel any pain at all, it's time to revisit some of the previous steps. Maybe we go back to the butt clock technique. Maybe I need to breathe a little deeper during the entire situation. Now this is why I don't recommend poppers for loosening up. I'm not gonna sit here and tell y'all to not use poppers as if I don't have them in my freezer at this very moment, but I don't use them to loosen up. I use them for the euphoric feeling. When you hit a popper, you might not be as ready as you think. And because you're high in euphoria, you might be taking more than you're able to handle and it feels good for 30 seconds, but tomorrow it might hurt like a bitch and it could lead to a hemorrhoid, an anal fissure, anal bleeding. So wait until you've properly done the work to loosen up and don't rely on poppers to do that work for you. Try to do things holistic, baby. The beautiful thing about penises is that they come, oh, come. <laughs> they come in so many shapes and sizes, but if you're not careful, that beauty can turn into a real pain in the ass super fast. It takes a village to teach each other this kind of information, y'all. The school system obviously is never gonna get on board. So please leave some comments below on some of your favorite tips that have worked for you, help you loosen up, but keep it holistic. Don't be posting some crazy shit down there. Whether you're taking small, large, or even strap-on penises, aftercare is going to be vital in making sure you can bounce back to bottoming with comfort and ease. So check out this video to make sure you're doing just that. <laughs> Bottoms up. And be careful.